I'm about to tell you three reasons why I am more joyously excited about saying hello to you all and welcome to this this evening than anything I've done for a very long time. And the first reason is that I'm lucky enough to be Pro Vice Chancellor of Culture at Nottingham Trent University. So I am enormously proud of the work that our creative writing academics and students do, not only academically, but well, you're about to see what else they do. Um, but it's really, really enormously <coughs> proud making, and I mean that genuinely. We do some really seriously good and important work, so well done. Secondly, I'm a member of the board of UNESCO City of Literature. So hi, Matt. Hi, yeah. I'm Jim. And so I'm really, really pleased that our relationship is being exhibited in public like this, because we are doing really wonderful things together, and I like to think that not only... Are we as Nottingham Trent better for it, but so is the city of Nottingham. So that's great. And lastly, I'm a woman. Yay. And so look at this. this, this <laughs> so for all of those reasons, thank you for coming. And I can't wait. Well, thank you. <laughs> when does a poem become a place to rest? or rise up from, a room in which everyone is seen. If words can build a better world, praise those who are working to build the words. I'm Jim Hall, Programme Manager at Nottingham UNESCO City of Literature. Thank you for joining us on World Poetry Day for this global gathering of poets at Clifton Campus Library. Welcome also to those of you currently watching via our live stream on Facebook. Please keep tuning in. Before introducing tonight's event, a few words in response to the horrific terror attacks in New Zealand. As a UNESCO City of Literature, we stand in solidarity with the people of New Zealand and our colleagues in UNESCO cities of Auckland and Dunedin during this terrible moment of suffering in Christchurch. UNESCO seeks to build peace through international cooperation. Its mandate is as relevant as ever to use arts and creativity as a powerful force for uniting communities to heal and process the trauma that remains from violence. Our colleagues in New Zealand are not alone in this struggle. Tonight's celebration of World Poetry Day is a timely occasion to honour poets, to celebrate one of humanity's most treasured forms of cultural and linguistic expression. This year, we would particularly like to stress an issue related not only to poetry, but also to various fields of our everyday experience gender equality. We strongly believe that art, including poetry, is a strong voice in supporting women's rights and value of their artistic work. We want to thank Granada City of Literature for their creativity and leadership. They have coordinated 13 other international celebrations with UNESCO Cities of Literature. Here are a few examples. There are the Imposter Poets, a Reykjavik-based poetry collective, inviting female poets to join them for a day of poetry readings a 24-hour reading of poetry in Ljubljana, a special tramline taking passengers on a poetic journey between the UNESCO creative cities of Heidelberg and Mannheim in Germany, and a film and audio recording of young Norfolk laureate Sierra Drury reading a poem she wrote to mark 100 years since the suffragette movement. And tonight, please welcome 12 of Nottingham's finest poets. Join us in shining a spotlight on women's creativity voices and the incredible breadth, energy and diversity on Nottingham's poetry scene. Let's make poems be another way through. Introducing Becky to kick off the evening. Thank you. Jim? Yes. We'll clap. Oh. <laughs> It's a pleasure to have you all here today in this fantastic library at Nottingham Trent University where many of us have spent happy hours practicing and working on our creative and critical writing. So it feels very appropriate to be here today as somewhere that's really been um, important in my writing journey. So these poets are all part of the community of 60,000 students we have in Nottingham who are all um, part of this new to Nottingham audience that UNESCO City of Literature is looking to attract and engage and enrich their cultural experience of being in the city. So our poets tonight are sharing poems that reflect on all stages and experiences of being a woman, aren't we? Yes. yes. <laughs> and um, 
These poems and the poets come with the spirit of cherishing our links with Europe and beyond um, as part of World Poetry Day. So our first poet tonight is the fabulous Panya Banjoko. She's an established writer and performance poet and her collection, Some Things, is published by Burning Eye Books. Uh, she's recently been to Jaipur. Ooh. <laughs> And she's a Vice Chancellor's Scholarship PhD student here at MTU. So it gives me great pleasure to introduce Panya Banjo Co. Good evening. I'm not going to stand behind the lectern because then you won't see me. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the things of being short. Uh, but yes, fantastic being here, fantastic sharing with everyone here and who are uh, live streaming through uh, Facebook. So, the poem I'm going to do for you tonight is one called uh, One of a Kind, and um, yeah, I'll just get straight into it. They had kept him seven long years, hidden behind a crumpled wall, hidden in a cavernous shelter, set like a cage. And when the king ordered, they fed him mildew bread, made him drink the milk of rancid yaks, waited for his skin to turn pale, and for his voice to leave him. Then, when he was eager for water to dislodge the sand in his throat, they promised him life for his stint. They told him, Use your fingers like the limbs of a Darwin's bark spider. Make beauty like purple lilies and the call of the shuffle wing bird. With tools laid out like surgeons' instruments, he performed his vision. Pounding like the call of a woodpecker, he planted and formed thick inlets of gold into sunbird. With hands bent and nails jagged, he planted gems in rows like marching ants, and with each new tide, he cut, pierced, and soldered. And when he had shaped his dreams into curves, when he could see the image of his face in the gleam of the dome, when he knew it could not be matched, stood like time were. The king called his people to behold the work of the master craftsman and they reveled with delight at the skill in his bones. Then they cut off his hand. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, so our next poet is Victoria Zoe. She is from Malta and has been at Nottingham for the last four years as an undergraduate and MRes student. She's also the winner of the Carcanet Press PM Review Prize for her, her undergraduate creative writing dissertation. So fantastic to have you with us here today, Victoria. Thank you. Not very good at introduction, so I'll just start with the poem. This is called Breathing Exercises. I lay in Shavasana under my mother's yonic chandelier. Its spine pointed straight down to my belly button, its grand foliage spread out to encase me. Eyes closed, I recite my affirmations. I am strong, I am resilient, I am a woman. But my hands seek out lumps where the carpet creases, and again, my chest cramps, my throat tightens, and the lumps transpire into ants under my skin. I perspire, I can't breathe, I fall asleep. Thank you. Mm. Well, thank you. Thank you if you just joined us on Facebook. We're into our uh, live stream today to celebrate World Poetry Day. 
and um, what we're going to do is hear from all the poets here and go round more than once. So you have a chance of catching up with people as we, as we progress. Our next poet is uh, really enjoying herself on the MA in Creative Writing. She's interested in people on the margins of life and um, it's Caroline Spencer. And can I just say congratulations to Caroline. She's just uh, won the Stonewood Regional Writers Prize. So congratulations. Yeah. Okay, this is a poem about root vegetables. Um, I had a friend who loved root vegetables so much that she said she would rather be given a bunch of root vegetables than a bunch of flowers. Um, and her comments stayed with me and made me think about root vegetables. And I didn't realise quite how much I'd thought about them until I wrote this poem. <laughs> it's called Root Vegetable Religion. Carrot. I know you only in limited and broken ways. As a child, I put slices of your skull in saucers of water to see your fresh green hair sprout again. You have been a dry shred in all my pot noodles, a constant presence in city street vomit at 4am. Now I walk past chantonets in tiny black trays and my sin is finding you bendy and brown in the fridge drawer. Parsnip, I accept you as my difficult saviour. You live as a hermit, surviving deepest cold, to give me a tapering shape, which makes me reflect on my fingers whitened by illness, thin legs in intensive care beds, and yet you bring sweetness, difficult and distant as you are, and I want to bless you. Take your feathery root and grow straight in a field without stones. Turn it. My friend gives you to me mashed and buttered, making your taste palatable so that I can understand it. I can hear your delicate flavour, notes on a dulled heart. You are sensible and strange, an old woman beginning the voyage elsewhere with dementia, teaching me a mysticism I can only touch with fingertips. Bitter stumps of almost wood, you refuse to make this easy. My mother set the chip pan on fire every week and ran outside with wet tea towels around her hands put the pan on the back lawn. We all watched the fire together. Did your enormous energy, spuds from mud, burst into flame? Or perhaps it was the heat of peeling your clothes on the kitchen side to reveal a body almost as white as salt. Fingers sliding over skin, earthly pleasure suddenly becoming chips. I once went to a cookery class 101 ways to cook beetroot. <laughs> Although we hurt you, boiled and shredded and chopped you, when we rubbed off your scalded skin, I saw your darkness shine. Night and day were close together. I tasted your metallic hint, ancient cave walls, decaying fridges and cars. I saw we were not unworthy. You were willing to shed your thinnest purple blood for us. Root vegetables, you do not lift my heart like cats who live by leaping, but I enter into your burrowed body, digging down like a mole with nose tucked into mucky earth. Hmm. Um, so our next poet is Sophie Bayor. Sophie moved to Nottingham as a student. She has a pamphlet called Spiral Mind, developed during her MA in Creative Writing, and it features beautiful lyric poems which capture a moment in time. So Sophie, uh, please welcome her. Thank you. This one's called Red Moon. Red Moon 
bleeds into night sky. Other girls whisper, some ask me why. The first drops staining white linen, unfelt and unseen, an inconvenience rather than unclean. Blossoms atop rivers, flowing like time, unstoppable into womanhood I climb. Mm. Thank you. Welcome if you've just joined us on the Facebook live stream this evening here at uh, NTU Clifton Library for our celebration of World Poetry Day. We're hearing from uh, a, 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 not a baker's dozen actually, because it's a, a collection of women, so a cook's do a dozen, 13 women poets today. Uh, we are absolutely delighted to have with us uh, NTU's first writer in residence. Uh, so uh, Bridie Squires is the first writer in residence at Nottingham Trent. She's an established poet and spoken word performer, and she's also the editor of Left Lion, which does tireless work mm. in promoting the arts and culture in Nottingham. So we're absolutely delighted to have her with us here today. So, Bridie Squires, thank you. One. Thanks, Becky. Happy World Poetry Day, everyone. <laughs> uh, this one is called Snenter Market. A hard hatted man sings the final countdown, wraps industrial Christmas lights around a recently erected tree. The woman in the cafe says she hadn't been very well when he asks about her, ma'am. Every time she draws out the caramel tart from the fridge, chips away at another slice, she serves it up with a wonky smile. Mm. <laughs> so, um, I want to welcome as well uh, two undergraduate students at NTU who are doing sterling work as we speak this evening. We've got Dominic Higgs and Darianne Lawley, and they are responsible for... for uh, feeding back on your comments on Facebook. So thank you very much to them for supporting us. And if you do want to take part, all you need to do is to uh, join the Nottingham City of Literature Facebook page, or you can um, join us on Twitter with hashtag WPD2019 and hashtag Cities of Lit Poetry. So I'm going to have a turn now. And um, my, name, I know. <laughs> so my name is Becky Cullen and I'm a poet and research fellow here at NTU. And um, I've written a, um, a poem uh, for the mothers of our international students. For the mothers of international students. <coughs> if my daughter were transplant, transplant I'll start again. Oh, no. <laughs> I'll start again. <laughs> okay, so the mothers of international students. If my daughter were transplanted to a place where the buildings and the people were a whole other language, what would I do? But you let your children fly, pray for warm earth underneath their feet, for peaceful sleep, for their skin to protect them from the hard, sharp cold. Mothers, let us pass our children round the world Cut them in our palms like drops of water in a drought, like a last seed in a vault, a gift to the world. Mm. So Julie Gardner, who's our next poet, has got lots of uh, City of Literature connections. So hello to our international City of Literature partners, uh, who are all celebrating World Poetry Day today. Um, so, she moved to Nottingham in 2016, so that's one. One of her daughters lived in Norwich, that's two. Her dad came from Manchester, that's three. And her next-door neighbours moved to Dunedin and left her cat, so that's four. So, <laughs> well done, Julie. So, um, she likes writing short fiction and poetry. She's an MA student, and it's Julie Gardner. Thank you. Hmm. I absolutely loved Jacob Polly's collection, Jack Self. Uh, but there was no mention of Jack's sister, Jill. But here's her poem. Memory and make-believe. Jean tucks a rug round Jill Self's knees. 
pats her wrinkled sparrow hand distractedly, leaves her in the overheated prison pastel room where fragile men and women serve their life end sentences. Jill Self sips tea, allows her mind to skitter spin, welcomes in the gentle ghosts of memory and make-believe, an echoing of whispered words, drifting flimsy imagery. Knick-knack, paddy-whack, snap-crack, burnt black branches, narrow track, running back to Lamanby with little brother jumping Jack, little blue-eyed Jack the apple of their mother's eye. I spy with my little eye, something beginning with lavender's blue, jilly jilly, lavender's green. When I am king, jilly jilly, you shall be my lawful wedded ladybird, ladybird, to have and to fly, fly away home to the little cottage up the hill where chill winds shake the window panes, wakeful nights sigh. I spy rockaby, hush you, sing a lullaby, a baby's blanket, soft as milk, silver thread of spider silk links yesterday, today, tomorrow, days of joy with days of sorrow. So hush, my sweet one, hush, my dear, own the silence that you hear, clear as water, warm as earth, silence that is yours by birth, closer with each sighing breath, silence that is yours in death. I forgot I had to get back up then. Right. Uh, so, um, our next poet is Hannah Cooper Smithson. She came to Nottingham as a student, and her poetry has been published online and in anthologies. She's doing a Midlands Four Cities funded PhD exploring eco poetry and how unconventional poetic form can destabilise the boundary between humans and nature. Sounds very exciting. Yeah. <laughs> okay, um, so please join me in welcoming Hannah Cooper Smithson. Well, hopefully, this lives up to that introduction. <laughs> This is called Common Ash and Her Sisters. Jasminium means only herself. She is frothing white stars adorning the brow of a bride. Forsythia belongs to a man of peace. She is a yellow, four lobed brightness, a flourishing. Syringa, a blueness, is otherwise known as Madame Lemoine, Mrs. Edward Harding, is otherwise known as Firmament. Olive means only herself is pulp and milk for oil. Common ash is chopped, cleaved, her face sanded until smooth, eyes and nose removed, mugs leave wet rings on her cheeks. Her spine is cracked, folded four times into the legs of a spindly chair. She is sold for 30 pounds from the boot of a car. Her arms are steamed, twisted, contorted, pinned in to be polished, by the strokes of descending hands. Her ribs are whittled into slender spoons. She lies flat on their tongues. Her pelvis, sanded smooth, becomes a heavy bowl that holds soft stone fruits. Her skin is shaved away and her heart chiseled out, a knotting of roots and tubers and names. Ash meaning ash meaning remains, burnt matter. Ashen meaning to be of the body of ash, to become as ash to be dried, scattered. Fraxinus meaning the javelin, the spear. Excelsior meaning gloria, gloria in excelsis. Her body is filed into white dust. She fills the cracks in the floor. Mm. Thank you, Hannah. I think it's time to say hello to Sandy. So uh, Sandeep Mal, uh, who is the uh, director of Nottingham City Literature, is actually at Beeston Library this evening interviewing Kate Moss. So um, a Nottingham shout out to Sandeep. Uh, and um, how are the comments going? Are we getting comments? Marvellous. Are people having fun? 
Good. Well, that's good. Thank you. Continue having fun then, please do. Um, and hello to my son, James, if you're watching. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> so um, our next poet is um, Ali Stoneman, who was founding editor at... Uh, founding poetry editor at Left Lion magazine and showcased the work and supported many local poets for which we're very grateful, Ali. Um, she's also at AHRC and Midlands for Cities Funded and uh, she's been to 10 UNESCO Cities of Literature <laughs> so far, she says. So, uh, yeah, many to go still. <laughs> okay, so please join me in welcoming <coughs> Ali Stoneman. Wind balls. Father, you pelted our legs with tiny windfall apples when we looked for you at dusk. You would not recognise the orchard now. A storm felled the old Bramley and Pippin. We lost Browns and Discovery to voles, root nibblers. That long cold year, the Crimson King rotted, crashed down. Hard green apples bounced like raindrops raised bruises as we chased and hollered. You knew where the robin nested, prime locations of knots and hollows. You lifted me up to see. It was you who made me flinch. You watched Exeter burn when you were five. Father, you came from a time hard as windfalls, territorial as birdsong. When we buried you, spring sunshine fell through bare branches, sheep bleating in orchards beyond the churchyard walls. If you walked in now, you wouldn't know us. <laughs> Our next poet has been published by two Nottingham Presses, uh, Laundrette Books and Mud Press. Uh, she's doing a PhD exploring the dynamic connections between, oh my word, <laughs> Neuropsychoanalysis, modernist poetic language and material objects. Um, yeah, oh, I need to have a conversation with you about that. Okay, so um, I'd like to welcome Lauren Terry, please. <laughs> the Sleeping Woman is a Cubist portrait. Semblance of an unexpended artillery shell or unlit table lamp, shade nodding. She has come apart, a soiled dinner plate, shattered and stinking, spilling geometric shapes from the bed's single frame. Her members are pure assemblage, rivet, tongue, and cane. A plastic butter knife detaches, reattaches itself at an obscene angle. One pinion limp beneath the sheets, the other tailing the thing beyond the ceiling. Mm. Friedrich has just whispered to me that she doesn't know what she's doing here. <laughs> <laughs> but she's here to read us a poem. So um, she teaches German, her native language German, in higher education. And she's on the NTU MA in Creative Writing. Says that uh, writing has become an essential part of her life. And although poetry is rather new to her, she is loving it. Mm. Which is what it's all about. So fantastic. Beardrich Friedrich, please. Thank you very much, Becky. Um, all right, I'll just start. After 50 years of feminism, I searched for my heart, the one you gave me, the one with a little emerald on the little gold chain. I looked in dirty laundry amongst lost socks and out-of-shape boxer shorts. I never found it. So I cooked a Sunday roast organic and sustainable. <laughs> <laughs> With Yorkshire puddings, homemade. I followed your mum's advice, cut carrots into sticks, value traditions. Added beans as second greens, not German. The sweetness of caramelized onion thickened the air, made my eyes sting. Cold water, didn't soothe. 
another man. I'll help you, you shouted, watching the fights, and reminded me not to burn the crackling crust. Mustn't forget. The pens scrubbed and dishes dried, promises. I cleaned the loo and swept the dust from under the bed in which we lie every night on spans of yarn, invisible white, a shadow of the dress I once wore. You left me for easy care. I live happily ever after. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We've nearly gone all the way around now. Thank you to everybody who's with us on our Facebook live stream today. And thank you to NTU Clifton Library for hosting this fantastic celebration of World Poetry Day. Um, Tuesday Shannon is celebrating because this very week, ladies and gentlemen, this very week her uh, poetry uh, is published in Take Three, Volume One from Sounds Right Press. Uh, she's a, a, a PhD... She's a PhD researcher writing critically and creatively about industrialisation in the north. Yep. Great. And you've also studied at the Institute del Teatro yes. in Barcelona. Yes. So another international city of literature mm. connection. So over to you, Tuesday, Shannon. Thank you. Um, this poem is called Passing Through. Summer nights here smell of kebab shops and petrol. <clears throat> Some boy racer revs his clapped out Corsa as streetlights flicker in the evening dim. Paydays fill pubs that have sat near empty all month, each one seeping music from open windows. Heavy doors swing wide and out floods a flock of girls in two high heels, stumbling, negotiating cracks in the cobbles. Their bus pulls up close to the curb, shudders to a stop, and they pause, turn, check themselves in half-reflections on tinted glass. Then, with the squeal of rubber on tarmac, it's as though they were never there. Mm -hmm. finally, thank you, Tuesday. Finally, for this turn round the block, mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, Joe Dixon. Joe Dixon's debut pamphlet, The Woman in the Queue, was published by Milos Press. Uh, she has visited uh, UNESCO City of Literatures in Poland, Ireland and Estonia to deliver critical creative workshops with our Critical Poetics um, Research Group. And um, she's a critic and academic and research assistant in Critical Poetics. And she's also my friend. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> Thank you very much, friend. <laughs> Everybody else is my friend as well, sorry. <laughs> right, I'm going to finish this, uh, this first round with um, a poem that I contributed to a, an anthology called Furies, um, the female spirits of justice and vengeance, where we are asked to respond to that as a theme. This is a poem called On Mending. Outside, the missile thrush sits tall on his perch and rehearses his song in dread of the field fairs that raid the garden's dwindling stores. Inside the white room, she accepts a bunch of unseasonal flowers. He stands with his thumb down a pinstripe seam. And when he's gone, she pounds her fists into the grout until the clo grout clogs with red and she's hoisted by her armpits, slung on the bed, where she watches them at work in technicolor across her lids, sprinkling salt in his tea, cutting paper dolls in the folds of the times. Outside, heronries nest as many as ten pairs while a fluffed teal splashes and a shell duck tosses his emerald head. Inside the white room, she accepts a bunch of unseasonal flowers. He stands with his thumb down a pinstripe seam. 
And when he's gone, she pounds her fists until the grout clogs with red, and she's hoisted by her armpits, slung on the bed, where she watches them at work in technicolour across her lids, pinching his doughy calves until he cramps under Irish linen sheets. Outside, leaves mesh green through brown moss, and hazel catkins expand, snowdrops shine. Inside the white room, she accepts a bunch of unseasonal flowers. He stands with his thumb down a pinstripe seam, and when he's gone. Mm. So thank you everybody for joining us for this Facebook live stream from Nottingham NTU Clifton Library. Uh, we're here to celebrate UNESCO City of Literature World Poetry Day and thank you for joining us to uh, join with the celebration. So we've heard from all of our 13 uh, cook's dozen of poets today and we're going to go round again, going round again. Everybody all right? Everybody in the live audience? Still alive? <laughs> You're still here? Good. Great. Okay. So uh, it gives me great pleasure again to introduce Panya Banjoko. Thank you. Now, uh, I'm going to be reading one from my uh, collection, some things. Um, as you get older, the, the notion of taking risks changes. And for me, right now, I'm taking a risk because I'm going to be reading without my reading glasses. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see how this goes. Let's see. It'll be fun, won't it? <laughs> Live entertainment. Uh, this one's called The Offering. Fifty-four days later, she swept away the debris, slumped at the place marked X bent down on both knees and kissed the ground with her forehead. Had it been 53 days, it would have been too soon. She had returned six times to look for it, the egg-like structure that shone like the Procyon star. After the first crossing, they moaned it was too hard to capture with shoulders hung low against the thrashing rain, she walked the seas, commanded the waves to fold, knew the axis just needed a nudge. 54 days later, she released it on the imposing blue, a mist of molecules that suffocated terror and gave the world back its glimmer. They had a lot to learn from this thing called woman. Thank you. Thank you very much. I wanted to just take a second to uh, reflect on the number of women poets we have here, uh, all of whom have been developing their writing as part of undergraduate or MA or PhD programmes here at NTU, and all have been sort of, uh, supported by uh, some staff who deserve a word of thanks, I think. Mm -hmm. So um, this huge uh, activity, okay, huge is perhaps not the right <laughs> word, but this uh, level of activity really is due to some very hard work by people such as Mahendra Solanke, mm -hmm. uh, by Sarah Jackson, by Rory Waterman, and by Andrew Taylor. So I'd like to thank them uh, publicly on behalf of all of us, I think. Have I missed anyone else? No, I haven't missed anyone else. So thank you. <laughs> okay, so uh, now it's back to Victoria Zoe. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, <laughs> again. This is a poem for my housemate because she's also encountered the same issue that I have. I don't know if anyone has a problem with ladybirds at the minute. <laughs> but um, this is about the ladybirds. It's called Spring Equinox. As spring comes, bounding up the hill, my bedroom becomes the ladybird Big Bang. In the morning, I wake up to them flitting against my windowpane. At night, I tiptoe over the dry shelves as my carpet becomes a beach of fossilised corpses. 
and my feet crack. Oh no, sorry. I'm going to reread that. And under my feet, they crack like mollusks in sand. Spring cleaning to me is the collection of death in a lavender scented hoover bag, labeled dry ladybirds and crumbs my ex left when he lost left over. <laughs> I send it to the bin like an Amazon delivery, airtight and plastic wrapped. But I add, return to sender, hoping in vain that the bin men will find it funny. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Victoria. And that over now to Caroline Spencer. We're doing well on the count of carrots this evening. I've noticed carrots more than once, so maybe there'll be more carrots as we go on. Anyway, uh, Caroline Stanzer, thank you. This is a poem about Brexit. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Um, not long before writing this poem, I went to a caravan park on the East Coast where there were lots of roads that had eroded and was sticking out over the sea and going nowhere. Um, and I realised that whenever I thought about Brexit, it got mixed up in my mind with those images of coastal erosion. And that that had also got mixed up with some of the images and thoughts from my job, which is working in a hospice. So here's the poem. It's called Coastal Erosion, Brexit and the Precarious Nature of Being Alive. <laughs> Chunks are falling off. It's like losing control. More and more of Britain being eroded and sliding into the sea. On the beaches, we're left with tiny spits of land to stand on. These disappearing jetties. This is England. I'll try to move inland, but the circle got smaller and now I'm not in it. The whole coastline changing shape. It all seems stable for a while, then a huge chunk falls and I realise I don't know where this is going to stop. Where does the slope end? So many things make us not know ourselves. Too much calcium in the blood can cause aggression. Too much alcohol can cause a hazy bliss. We become other to ourselves. We are made of matter from the core of stars, and yet we fail to recognise each other. Can we still love chaotic imperfection? If you only had one arm, would I love you more? The lost or crushed part underlining your fragility. These scattered moments of brilliance we share don't stop us being dim and broken. They don't stop the calling to send them all home. It is sweeping in from beyond us, from beyond all we plan and think we know. Extremism, discouragement, paralysis. Have I got a whole lot weaker or are OXO cubes getting harder to crush? <laughs> I'll have to get used to a smaller island. I'll have to get used to having fewer friends. Mm. today are coming in the spirit of cherishing our links with Europe and beyond and a strong desire to keep and develop and continue to develop those connections. Uh, I'd like to hand over now please to Sophie Bayor. Thank you. So this is a poem that I wrote for a board that was put up in the library. Um, I think it was for radical female poets. Um, so this one is called, We Will Not Be Silenced. Centuries of rage, bloodlines of power, patterns of abuse, oppression, depression. We will not be silenced. A river, a gaping mouth, slackened jaws, sickened by wars. We will not be silenced. Mothers and daughters, sisters and lovers, rising together, shouting forever. We will not be silenced. Until the fight is over, until justice is served, until we lack fear, until we are heard, 
We will not be silenced. Thank you. So it gives me great pleasure to introduce again Bridie Squires, who is the first writer in residence at Nottingham Trent University and also the editor of Left Lion magazine. So I think, Bridie, that poem was created in response to one of your works. Yes. Yeah. Come tell us about it. <laughs> Friday Squire. Thank you. Um, so I ran a workshop in one of the rooms over there um, on radical women poetry and we put a lovely display in the library of our poems, thanks to Linda over here. And um, yeah, I've invited people to also respond, even if they weren't part of the workshop. So thank you so much for putting that up. Because when, when, I, when I read through the ones that people had put up just off their own backs, I was like, yes! <laughs> Let's go. Okay. Um, excuse me. A group of lads are huddled around a car by the River Trent at night. I am walking in the dark along the embankment steps. I turn to their call. They chorus. Have you got a lighter? Ah, I think. They have probably thought of everything. Rizzler, Blackie, Roach, Weed, but forgot about the fire. <laughs> we all do sometimes, poor sods. I thumb the flint of the one pound five pence clipper foresight lying reliably in my pocket look to their open door know how easy it would be with five of them I remember say sorry no I do not smoke <laughs> Thank you. We are progressing. Thank you for joining us if you just uh, joined us for the Facebook live stream. And uh, we're here today in Nottingham Trent University's Clifton Library to celebrate UNESCO World Poetry Day. Thank you to Rebecca Broad and for Linda Parker for all the support they've given us from library services. Thank you very much. I'd like to uh, welcome back to the, the I was going to say stage, but I don't know, the imaginary stage. Uh, Julie Gardner, please. <laughs> Grandmothering. Look, I say, pointing to tree roots where a grey spider spins sticky silver thread. We crouch together, quiet, still, until her small soft hand creeps into mine. I sense her fear, uncertainty. Say, this small creature wishes her no harm. We're safe together in the darkening wood. At home, her mum and baby sister wait. We'll all have macaroni cheese for tea. She skips ahead. Red wellies flash and flick along the path, kick autumn leaves. And I resist the urge to call her back, to hold her small, soft hand again, more tightly. Thank you very much. Our next poet is uh, Hannah Cooper Smith. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> Hannah, <laughs> Hannah Cooper Smith. Thank you. <laughs> This poem is for my auntie, called Seedling. The room is hot and loud. London clutters the space with traffic sounds. Brickwork and tarmac barge in through the windows. The sun blares a relentless horn of light that bakes the plastic banana plant, the stuffed monkeys on the sofa. Auntie hunched over in the kitchen. Behind the guest chair on a careful carpet of folded newspaper is a row of plastic pots filled with pressed black soil. Damp crumbs cradle a wooden ball scooped from pulpy flesh with shaking hands. A slow green shoot pricks the soil, 
buds swell and rupture into bright curled leaves. They eat up all the traffic sounds and the view of the bricks, the relentless sun, while Auntie watches from her soft chair, eyes bright. Thank you very much. Uh, everybody okay still? <laughs> good, good. So we are, um, it's 10 to 8 now, but keep, keep watching. We've got 10 minutes scheduled. <laughs> but you know, we might just extend ourselves just for the, for the fun of it. Um, <laughs> okay, so, uh, yeah, I was going to say book a limb, but that's not quite appropriate. So, uh, <laughs> Ali Stoneman is a poet who is talking about, thinking about the coastline. Is that right? So lots of watery poems, but not today. Oh, oh not today. <laughs> no watery poems. And uh, Ali Stoneman, thank you. <laughs> Although it's quite nice, these events, because you find out about the shared interests and there's coastal erosion. Hi. <laughs> 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 And sometimes the sort of beautiful togetherness of others can, can leave you feeling a little bit lonely on the outside, so, or between, that's what this poem's about. Your bikes are locked together against the lamppost outside the bar. Inside, people twirl between conversations, like the paper Yule hearts in each window, dancing in updrafts of air. I wait on the pavement, watching snowflakes vanish on your flushed pink cheeks as you pull on hats and gloves, wrap scarves, to disentangle the bikes. You are chatting as you glide away up the road, wingtip to wingtip, never quite touching, like geese in formation, flying south. Thank you very much. And uh, I'd like to go back now to Lauren Temley. Thank you. Worry dolls. We are six little bodies in a pouch, peg-legged. We wear straight jackets, black dots for eyes, awaiting you, skin suit. Wet tongue dribbling confessions we will not tell because our lips are sutured shut. Loosen the cord and let us slip head first into your sticky palm. Mm. It's really wonderful to have some time to hear everybody's poetry and to get a feel for the diversity of everything that's going on. Fantastic. Big at Friedrich. Mm. Thank you. <laughs> This is called Understanding. A knock at the door, the builder came to tell me about my roof. The tiles want changing, the felt replacing, the water overflows, and rain will seep through. Can you understand? I'm nodding, still smiling. No, he's right. Say yes, I understand. He points upwards and downwards, drawing circles in the air. His eyes are asking. His voice is rising, stressing and stretching each syllable and sound. I mean, do you mean, do you, do you understand? I mean, don't get me wrong. It's not that I'm saying, uh, you understand? I mean, I work at Zim. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> No, it happened to me. <laughs> so bound to happen. I start again, sorry. <clears throat> Understanding. A knock at the door. The builder came to tell me about my room. The tiles want changing, the felt replacing, the water overflows, and rain will seep through. Do you understand? I'm nodding, still smiling. No, he's right. Say yes, I understand. He points upwards and downwards, drawing circles in the air. His eyes are asking, his voice is rising, stressing and stretching each syllable and sound. I mean, do you, 
I mean, do you understand? Because do Deutsch, ich verstehen. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's not that I'm saying, you understand? I mean, I worked at Siemens, know how you are feeling. And I mean, the job needs doing, the tiles need moving, and we don't want to damage your home. Do you understand? I do. Thank you. <clears throat> <laughs> Thank you very much, and I'd like to welcome Tuesday Shannon, please. Thank you. Thank you. Um, this next poem is called Satis House, um, and if that sounds at all familiar, it was written after Great Expectations, and what is, in my opinion, one of the best female characters ever written. My hand was stopped halfway to the altar. So cease the ticking of the clocks. Keep their hands forever apart. Let the dust settle, they said. It's settling still on the wedding breakfast, money wasted. And if the shoe were on the other foot, I never would have deceived him. Bring me a daughter. Name her for the stars. I'll give her room to grow, pour ice into her heart. In these rooms, do not move a thing. I shall wear this dress until its lace becomes a second skin. In this house... I will die twice. I can reveal Tuesday that uh, Sandy's favourite book is Great Expectations. Really? Yes. Mm. Random UNESCO fact <laughs> of the day. Okay. Um, so I just want to say thank you very much, everybody. Before we, I've not forgotten. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, I need to read another poem. Um, okay, I'll do that in a second. So, I've been working on, um, with Nottingham UNESCO City of Literature on a project called Poetry Pulse. So, we have over a thousand poets currently in Nottingham, and um, they're all involved in different kinds of poetry. We've got a really active spoken word scene, we have lots of published poets, but we've got no way of um, capturing what those poets are doing or we haven't got a unified sense of what's going on with poetry in the city so we've got no idea of well we have got an idea but we know what's going on don't let me don't let me give you the wrong impression <laughs> but, we, <laughs> but we've got no record of this wealth of activity so we've got no we want to look at ways of using digital technology to harness and um, uh, curate and showcase the work of poetry in Nottingham. So basically, if you're a poet, please could you send me a film? <laughs> so you can do that by going on the Nottingham City of Literature website, finding the Poetry Pulse page uh, and uh, submitting your film as soon as. It can be in any format. At the moment, we're just seeing what we've got so we get a feel for poetry in Nottingham and where people are at if they need more help skills, mentoring, etc, etc. So um, please send your films. Thank you very much. So uh, I'm going to read a poem about washing <laughs> now. Uh, OK, because it's a poem about washing in spring. So how to hang washing. It must be spring. There should be blackthorn blossom, a smudge of sun across your cheek. From your patch of earth, You'll hear the crest of chatter from the playground at the school. These pegs nip snugly in time with magpie calls as your arms lift, stretch, clip, <laughs> repeat. <laughs> Thank you. Mm. So, our final poet of the evening. It's your friend and mine, Jo Dixon. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, Becky. And to close this uh, fantastic um, uh, round of poems, I'm going to read a poem that's inspired by a place that we've probably all spent time in, well, we've been in Nottingham audience, and probably lots of people out there that's inspired by uh, the parks of Woolerton Hall. 
It's called Overture. A young stag, all emerging antlers, raises his nose towards a teenage couple over by the cedar stump, shrugging off its bark, exposing boucle ridges, silky crevices, and fibrous escarpments gripped by webs. On the next bench, moisture in wooden slats soaks their jeans, and a plaque reassures pleasure and companionship found here, while he defines her shoulder blade with his fingertips, and toes the browned pine needles pulped in the mud like wedding rice on a wet day. If you want to be in a relationship, the boy starts. Later, he steers her around the camellia house, rainwater performing on glazed roof lights and petals buckling on stone flags. Her eyes downcast, tracing the entangled circles of bronze grills above heating ducts where pennies have been lost. Mm. So I don't want to say too much, I don't really need to, uh, but I will acknowledge that those of you that aren't aware, during this night we've had um, viewers internationally, I believe we've had Malta, America, Baghdad, I believe as well. So they have all been watching what's happening tonight. So thank you to all of you watching and including everyone in the UK. I also know people have been cooking and dipping in and out or watching, which is quite nice. Um, there's been a lot of activity, so those of you doing all that and commenting, thank you so much. Um, I don't need to say much more other than thank you everyone for being here supporting this kind of event, um, both if you're watching and if you're here now, Nottingham City of Literature, we are on Twitter at, at Nottingham City of Lit, which is N-O-T-T-M City of Lit. Our website is www.nottinghamcityofliterature.com, all the info is on our Facebook page. Keep an eye on what we're doing uh, and we'll keep promoting things like this. Uh, Matt, anything I need to mention about people watching? Have I covered everything? Uh, I think so, yeah. That okay. sounds pretty comprehensive. Uh, sorry. Bye. Subscribe, the newsletter. Subscribe, yes, do, subscribe do to that. our newsletter, please do, <laughs> including international uh, watches as well. And thank you so much for coming, and thank you, Becky, for doing so much to make this happen as well. If you have a round of applause. Please.